Hi everyone, I'm Faith Daniels. Let's see how many of you here today recognize this music. Let's see. Do you know what that is? It sounds vaguely familiar. Vaguely familiar? Can you make a guess? Gilligan's Island. Ah, it doesn't take a TV extra, a TV trivia expert to guess Gilligan's Island. It is TV's longest running sitcom, airing for three years, from 1964 to 1967, and living on in reruns ever since. In fact, it has never been off the air in the last 28 years. Never. Pretty remarkable in a business that measures success by the seasons. Well, guess what? The fearless crew is with us today. Please welcome Bob Denver, better known as Gilligan. <laughs> well, take a look at Mary Ann Don Wells. Hello, Don. And you can't have Mary Ann without the professor. professor. <laughs> Please welcome Russell Johnson. and make yourselves comfortable, you'll be stranded with us for the next 30 minutes. Good. Now, everybody knows how you got stranded on the island. But what we don't know, I don't think anyway, is how you ended up being cast in the roles you were cast in. Let's start with you, Bob. How did you end up as Gilligan? I met with Sherwood Schwartz, the producer, writer, and um, he was telling me about Gilligan's Island, and I said, could you give me some premises? And he said, well, a surfer rides in on a giant, giant tidal wave, lands on the island. I went, what? I said, well, how do you get him off the island? He says, well, reverse tidal wave, takes him back to Hawaii, <laughs> knocks himself out, and he can't remember where he was. And he told me a few premises, and I started laughing, and I said, I want to do it very much. You know, I just, it's the silliest, you know, silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. And can I do physical comedy? He said, well, it fits the character perfectly. So I said, yeah, I want to do it. So how, said, how did you learn how to do all that silliness, though? I had Alan Hale. You know, he could <laughs> catch me. I'd run across the stage, leap in the air, and he'd go, <laughs> put me down like that. So he was great to work with, you know, so it was just really a lot of fun. Don, how did you end up as Mary Ann? Did you have to audition? Oh, yeah. But we were not, uh, the professor and Ginger and Mary Ann were not part of the original pilot. I think the three characters were school teachers or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. But when, the, when, they, when it was finally purchased, when CBS finally bought it, they replaced these three characters. So we had to go in and audition for a series that was sold already with a, a time spot and an advertiser. I had no idea how lucky you were to be able to audition for something like that. And I auditioned for about a week, about 250 women girls coming back and forth. Uh, New York was auditioning at the same time. As a matter of fact, I think Tina Louise was cast in New York while I was cast in the same time. We auditioned together, didn't we, a couple times? No, I auditioned with Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I really, yeah. Yes, was that it? Yeah. 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 So you had to audition as well? Yes. Was uh, it a part that you really wanted to do? Well, yeah, in one sense. Uh, I had, uh, actually, this opportunity came back to me three times. The first two times I said no because there were other things that I thought I was going to do which didn't work out. The third time my agent called me and said uh, that they were going to recast, oh. you know, the, uh, the professor and the two girls. And uh, so I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll take a shot at so it. So who were those people who got booted out so you guys got the roles? Give wanna, us the dish. I don't want to say. I'll tell you something. No, yeah, don't you want to know? That's an, awful yeah. thing to, that's an awful thing to have happen. Yes. You know, as an actor, uh, you get a job, you get a series, you make a pilot film and it sells. And then somebody in the network says, we don't want you. We want the show, we want everybody else, but we don't want you. That's awful. Yeah, well, I don't think it was a so tell us who it was. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember. I don't either. No. I don't either. You beat out Raquel Welsh for the part of Mary Isn't that Ann. something? I can't imagine her even auditioning for Mary Ann. She should have auditioned for Ginger. But um, I, they kept telling me I had the role. And yet they kept having me come back tomorrow to, to, to audition with somebody else and no contracts were signed. So you know how tenuous that position is. And I think on a Thursday afternoon, this gorgeous girl came in and gorgeous figure to death for Marianne. I thought, well, that's it. But she didn't get it. She might not have wanted it. Maybe they offered it to her. I don't well, know. You were the perfect Marianne. Do people still see you and say, oh, that's Marianne? Oh, it's just amazing to me. It's just amazing to me. <laughs> I have the best story of all time. I'm kind of an adventurer, and I've been to Africa and climbed up to see the gorillas. And 
was from Stevens College, uh, the president and a few of my friends from Stevens, who we went to the Solomon Islands by canoe into villages that no women have ever been to before. Slept on the floors in grass mats with chiefs and in their huts and all of this sort of stuff. And as we arrived to the island of Sulafu by canoe in a rainstorm with all these wonderful uh, war dances going on that they gave us to introduce us, and I walked into the chief's hut, and the chief's wife said, I know you. Now, there's no running water, no electricity, no anything. <laughs> She had, she had been on the island of Haniara in the 70s and had gone to nursing school for a couple of years and used to come home and watch Gilligan's Island. That's amazing. <laughs> so you can't get away from it no matter where you are. Yeah, Bob, in your wildest dreams, when you signed on to do this, did you have any idea that this would be as popular as it has become? No, I would have made a better deal. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? You mean you didn't get rich off this? No, we all got no paid way. off in two years. Completely. By 68, we had, uh, the residuals were done. Oh, yeah. oh come on. Yeah. Well, come on, it's true, yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah. No, I'd be nice if it was, you know, reflecting a nickel on every rerun. We'd be rich, but... Uh, yeah, because it's never been off the air in 28 years. No, in fact, right. it picks up more people every year because of the two, three, four, five-year-olds. It's brand new to them. So now the parents get a half an hour break, you know, sit down and watch this, you know. I watched them when I was little. There's nothing in there that's offensive, you know, so they have a good time. In, in the past three years, you've lost three people from the cast. Three people who I imagine you were very close to. Sure. In, in addition to that, Tina Louise, who played Ginger, doesn't do anything with the cast. Not much. Well, here we are. <laughs> the yeah. three of us. Why, why, why does she stay so clear of it, do you know? I'm looking for Russ now. Better ask the professor that one. I tell you, if, if, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's probably because she wanted to divorce herself from that character. In, uh, in one sense, Right after uh, w the show was dropped in 67, I think all of us suffered uh, from what you might call typecasting. I had worked for 15 years before Gilligan's Island doing all kinds of things, mostly playing heavies. You after were the heavy, the professor? <laughs> well, there you are. After Gilligan's Island, people didn't see me that way at all. But I had done it for years. I think Tina simply wanted to really divorce herself from that character and the show and get on with another kind of thing. Still, we all, in a sense, suffered a kind of, of typecasting, of being put in a box by people. And it took a while to get out of it. See, I knew he'd have the answer. I knew he'd have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the professor always oh, has yeah. the answer, right? Oh, yeah. well, we're going to take a commercial break. We will Probably come back and we will continue <laughs> with the professor, <laughs> Marianne, and Julie. In a Now, does Bob Denver look a little more familiar to you now? Yeah, my, <laughs> Is my that the genuine article? It's one of the ones from the movie, I think, about 78. It's getting pretty old, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> you wear that while you're doing your gardening, do you? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look what Mary Ann, excuse me, Dawn. Does that is look all right? I answered anything. Oh, does that look familiar to anybody? Or is this yours, Russell? I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Mary Ann. Sweet Mary Ann. Sweet yeah. Mary Ann. Yeah. 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 Now, if they were to do Gilligan's Island today, what, do you think you'd still be wearing an outfit like that? Oh, no. They'd probably be really. Uh, we weren't allowed to show my navel. When I had my little short shorts, we had to have a little point up to cover my navel, and, and they had to be careful of uh, Ginger's neckline. Probably not. But I always said, Gilligan's was pre-Norman Lear. If we were doing Gilligan's Island now, we'd probably all be living in the same hut, and who knows? What <laughs> <laughs> so you think the professor and Marianne would finally get it together? Maybe. No, Gilligan no. and Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was never the hope. Everybody thought that you two would Gilligan eventually... Gilligan professor connect. and Marianne. All yeah. of them. <laughs> Come on. But why didn't you two ever... Date. Uh, because Sherwood he never didn't, asked me. No. <laughs> Sherwood didn't want that. Uh, that would have opened up and uh, that would have put the show into a different category in one sense. He wanted to keep the uh, professor neutral. asexual, <laughs> you know, <laughs> neutral. Into his uh, his experiment. His, his lepidoptera and his yeah. flora and fauna and that kind of thing. L l let me ask you, if, if Gilligan's Island were to be cast today, who do you think would play your part? I don't know, somebody that had a good agent, I hope, you know. Somebody that got residual. I don't know. Who about you? Gosh, I don't know. There's a lot of girls I think that could do it. It's an interesting thing, though. You know, um, Marianne is sort of the ultimate uh, girl next door, the kind of girl that you would take home to mom. It's amazing to see 
how that character's name has now almost uh, become synonymous with ingenue girl next door, girl you'd kind of like to take to the prom. <laughs> so uh, there aren't a lot of young women out there today doing that. We've got kind of the Madonna kind of <laughs> image instead, so I'm not sure. What a difference a day makes, huh? That's right. You have a question right. you'd like to ask? Yes, I just wanted to know, is, was it as much fun on the set as y'all made it look like it was, or was it just yeah. another day at work? No, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was fun. great. It was I mean, you got to go to work. Yeah, we had different episodes that were, you know, we'd just be finishing one and we'd be sitting there on a Friday and say, well, this is the silliest thing we've ever done. And some crew members would say, did you read next week's? <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. 